living and given us the wonderful privilege uh, to share and discuss his wonderful words of life uh, and uh, still given us uh, an opportunity and a time sufficient uh, to prove our faithfulness and make our calling and action sure. Uh, dear brethren, uh, I hope uh, last few weeks uh, we've been studying uh, volume one, uh, in the, the first uh, chapter, the joy in the morning. And last week uh, we have studied uh, how the diagram of the religious senses in the world uh, proves and shows uh, that the world uh, is hardly, you see, converted and the world is hardly come to the knowledge of truth. So, uh, where we need to doubt uh, whether uh, this real activity of bringing all the whole world to the knowledge of Jesus uh, or make them uh, disciples of Christ uh, has been uh, a success or not. And today, we are going to continue from the same uh, volume, uh, same uh, uh, you see, chapter, uh, page number 17, paragraph uh, 2 and 3. Uh, can any of the sister or brother read from the volume, brother? The very creed of today teaches that all of this billion of humanity ignoring the only name under heaven by which we must be saved are on the straight everlasting torment and not only so, but that all of this Hundred sixty million Protestants who believe such awful things of Jehovah's plan and purpose should be jealous in, really to a forward missionary enterprise. The wonder is that they are not prejudiced by it, really to believe those and to appreciate such conclusion would rob life of every pleasure and should should include every bright prospect of nature to show that we have not misstudied misstudied orthodoxy on the subject of the fate of the hidden we call from the pamphlet a mute appeal on behalf of foreign mission in which the diagram was published each concluding sentence is ever, ever evangelized the mighty generation abroad, the 1,000 million souls who are dying in Christless despair at the rate of 100,000 a day. Uh, thank you, sister. Uh, dear Bren, so... Uh, any thoughts uh, on this uh, paragraph? So, what do you understand from this paragraph? What Brother Russell is trying to tell you? Anybody, any comments? Uh, Jana Brother, Janet Sister, Enid Sister, any thoughts on it? So, what's your opinion? What's the message that is being conveyed in this para paragraph. Okay. So, in this paragraph, uh, uh, the question, you see, that is uh, on this paragraph is that uh, what do the various creed of orthodox teach with respect to these billions of heathen? You see, we know that the whole world, among the whole world, it is just 33% uh, of them are uh, Christians. Among them, even the names say Christians are there, who don't even touch the Bible, you see, who don't even go to the churches, who don't even have that concrete faith on our Lord Jesus that he is the only Savior uh, given in heaven, whereby we may be saved. You see, uh, the 
the whole world you see is still under a sin and ignorance so what do the orthodox uh, uh, believe the orthodox means uh, the those uh, who preach the word of god those uh, so called christians uh, so what do they believe about this one what do the uh, believe the, about uh, 67% who don't believe in jesus uh, you see huh what do the world believe what do the normal christians believe that if you believe in jesus you shall be saved if you don't believe in jesus what will happen to them what will happen ah uh, very good everlasting, everlasting. Tormented. yes so everlasting torment in where they say in the hell very good sir yes in hell that they will be tormented they will be tortured they shall be punished for ever and ever and ever and ever so they shall be given punishment you see so that is the the general you see belief of the you see orthodox christians who don't know the truth dear brethren you see uh, just think for a moment just only a few saints uh, have been saved you see and rest of all the humanity you see they are uh, tortured in hell mint uh, is it uh, practically you see viable is it practically feasible you see is that the plan of god if you see dear brethren uh, it is not one or two but it is the majority of them the majority of the whole world will be tormented in hell just think for a moment how much can a man sin you see bible says that uh, uh, god's uh, you see throne uh, the foundation of god's throne uh, is justice and truth uh, you see that's what the bible says uh, you see in psalms uh, so uh, if uh, god's uh, you see uh, main uh, a thing of a uh, throne is uh, justice uh, and truth how can god violate his own justice and give such a punishment for the whole mankind you see uh, read psalms 89 verse 14 psalms 89 verse 14 can anybody read it Brother John, or Brother Francis, is there? Psalms eighty-nine. Okay, no problem, brother. Psalms eighty-nine, verse fourteen, sister. Psalms eighty-nine, fourteen. Psalms eighty-nine, verse fourteen. Righteous and justice are the foundation of your throne mercy and truth go before you your face is that right is that correct super sister very good so here it says justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne that means uh, god's throne is kingdom rule is first justice you see and judgment so god never violates his justice and goes beyond that one to do any of the things uh do you have any example of god's strict justice any examples anybody know about god's strict justice any example anybody brother from the solomon island anybody <coughs> little bit louder i am not able to hear you yes uh, brother come again with a question the question is that any example of god's justice or god's judgment in the bible Yeah, God's judgment in the Bible is death. 
very good you see that one uh, we did god uh, implement uh, that one if you see it was in garden of eden so what did god tell to adam and eve if you eat the fruit thereof what will happen you will be dead yes you will be dead you see see god's uh, justice uh, uh, was very strict adam and eve ate how many fruit how many fruits do you think they ate in garden of eden only one only two <laughs> see only Sorry. one or two it might be uh, or more than one. one yes so god could have clearly forgive them isn't it that was the first mistake isn't it yes or no come again god could have forgiven the first uh, sin or the mistake which adam and eve committed isn't it god could have forgiven adam and eve isn't it no brother i think they is he didn't forgive them that's why he get them out from the garden of eden but we see that god never forgive them but god punish them you see and brought upon them sin and death you see the wages of sin is death death so that means if death has come god gave them the penalty so god could have clearly you see forgiven them why did not god do it that was strict justice you see his uh, foundation of his throne was justice itself so you can't violate justice and do things and please the lord therefore dear brethren if god is so strict and so just about uh, violating uh, his commands uh, just for, for for eating one fruit which god told you should not do then that shows god is very strict uh, he never violates that one now let us come to this point uh, about the whole humanity going for eternal torment uh, for everlasting to everlasting now how does it fit god's justice uh, a man if he lives uh, in his life you see every day he has 24 hours time in 24 hours 8 uh, hours uh, they go for the work and uh, another 8 hours uh, they spend for uh, sleeping and it is the balance 8 hours uh, that man does all activities uh, you see like for uh, his personal activities uh, waking up cooking food uh, you see and other things and all now let us assume that a man commits sin for the balance eight hours continuously that means 33% of his day let us assume that he gives only for sin then his entire life only 33% is the time that uh, they dedicate for uh, sin then if uh, that is the you see that is the analog uh, about uh, committing sin then definitely god should uh, punish them only for 33% of their uh, sin isn't it uh? you see just imagine 33% of the life they should be tormented or they should be punished but we see the whole world believes so they will be tormented for everlasting to everlasting it will be you see innumerable number of years uh, you see they would be tormented tormented now how is that fair enough that is what a uh, brother is trying to say you see the 116 million you see you see uh, only those being saved and rest of the whole mankind 
being uh, everlastingly tormented uh, you see how is it uh, dear brethren uh, this is the general belief of the whole orthodox christians uh, the, these uh, billions uh, of people you see will be tormented and they think that this is the you see the plan of god uh, you see dear brethren if this is the plan of god if uh, everybody knows that majority of them are going to hell then actually uh, the missionary activity should be more zealous uh, than before isn't it this clearly proves that the missionary activity or the what they are doing to bring many people to christ uh, is not uh, doing good so it is their duty then that uh, they should go and preach to to the whole world and bring many to christ uh. but in spite of all this uh, failures in spite of all this picture being given that the 67% of the people the billions billions of people are going to hell and nobody is uh, so much worried uh, to go and uh, you see convert the world dear brethren this uh, false belief uh, that god has planned to convert the whole world you see is a wrong idea itself this view or uh, this uh, you see teaching of uh, orthodox uh, that billions will go for uh, hell uh, to be tormented uh, you see dear brethren that is not uh, you see fair enough uh, you see therefore uh, you see uh, in the paragraph uh, it says uh, that uh, to show that we have misstated orthodox on the subject of the fate of ethan you could we quote from the pamphlet a mute appeal on behalf of foreign missions in which a diagram was published i hope last week you have seen this diagram you see huh? how you see this diagram you see where uh, you see the conversion uh, rate is been shown the green picture uh, is a picture of the uh, you see unbelievers uh, you see uh, seeing this one uh, who can come to a conclusion saying that uh, god has ever uh, planned uh, to convert uh, or bring everybody to knowledge of truth the uh, brethren that seems to be a very utter failure then uh, what is god doing dear uh, brethren therefore uh, you see its concluding sentence is uh, evangelize the mighty generations abroad uh, the 1000 million souls were dying in christless despair at a rate of 1000 a day you see that's what uh, they claim so let us convert the whole world let us evangelize evangelize the whole world why because uh, you see the death rate in the whole world is 1 lakh per day they but in spite of all these uh, things also we don't see any you see conversion activity going on a large scale in the whole world no missionary activity is been taking place in such a greater part dear brethren so this view of orthodox is totally contradicting to what actually is taking place in the field okay uh, any comments any thoughts anybody has got any views on this paragraph sisters and brothers of solomon island any thoughts any views jona brother okay yes uh, jacob brother how about you yes yeah yes ah uh, here what we read this sentence uh, discuss the moral imperative to be aware of those suffering it uh, emphasizes the missionary work due to the belief that many die without the knowledge of christ but here brother russell mentions the statistics 100000 people dying daily without this knowledge it reflects a perspective that such belief uh, should drive uh, something uh, for them they are zealously 
they are doing some more efforts to convert the world but they are converting the world with a wrong doctrine though it looks like uh, they are converting uh, they are bringing to uh, towards uh, jesus people are thinking but really not so when we see the ratio or in the chart the heathens are more as well as more more uh, most of the atheists are formed from the christianity most of the atheists they converted as atheists from the christianity due to the wrong doctrines then most of the muslims they are converting from the christianity because of the wrong thoughts wrong doctrines uh, uh, they are presenting the church system or the babylonian system the christ christianity christendom they are telling the untruths but really god our god is not uh, intended or not interested to say the wrong truths he always wants to be uh, is a god of order god of order so he wants always the truth should be going so before third century uh, three centuries the world was converted through the original truths after fourth century the uh, the nominal church system formed and they made many wars they captured lot of worlds then due to some of the good people some of the missionaries they done some good work because of that reason because of that reason because of the uh, real uh, what uh, what to say uh, they re real love on ransom truth many were converted earlier later it was destroyed because of the wrong truth like hell uh, the torment those things then when the people understood then uh, when the hell truth is hell is uh, whatever they taught is wrong then they converted to other religion and become atheist though they are christian they do not have a strong belief they do not have a strong belief on what they learned in the bible though they are having the bible they could not understand what the meaning is there so generation by generation it is going like that so it put uh, this way of uh, the christianity system put restriction to the church class selections so become the mid days become the dark ages so there was no selection for the church class see it put a restriction to the god's plan their satan is trying in different way to uh, avoid the growth of the church class because in the gospel age is really meant for church class 144000 selection so he delay is trying to delay that or something but but god knows how to do that how to handle that how to overrule overrule every thing that's what happening now so the wrong with the wrong doctrines we cannot convert the real world to become a church class that is that is my understanding in this passage thank you uh, thank you jacob sir sure the doctrine of hell you see that uh, completely you see uh, mobs uh, the real character of uh, god is never uh, motivating uh, uh, the heathen or uh, the unbelievers to come to the knowledge of truth you see that actually mars and takes uh, covers uh, the real character of god because when we read in the bible you see the god uh, that is a uh, uh, picture there is a god of love and god so loved the world that he gave his son but once if you come to this pure doctrine of hell that if you don't believe in christ then you shall be tormented in hell forever and ever hell fire where the worms die not uh, you see and the fire quenches not uh, so these things is not drawing more people to you see christianity so hence uh, 
this orthodox view is completely robbing uh, you see the real uh, essence from life uh, thank you dear brother anybody else any comments okay uh let us uh, go on to the next paragraph uh next paragraph uh, anybody can read pa page number 18 paragraph 1 But though this is the gloomy outlook from the standpoint of human greed, the scriptures present a brighter view, which is the purpose of this page to point out, instructed by the word, we cannot believe that God's great plan of salvation was ever intended to be, or ever will be, such a failure. It will be a relief to the afflicted child of God to notice that the prophet Isaiah foretell this very condition of things are its remedy. Says, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and bruise darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles, heathens, shall come to their light. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2 and 3. Yeah. In this prophecy, the gross darkness is lighted by the bow of promise. The Gentile, the nation of age, is general, shall come to the light. Thank you, brother. Very good, sir. Thank you. Uh, dear brother, so what's your comment on this uh, paragraph? So what what did you understand from this paragraph anybody any thoughts anybody from solomon island brother jona yes brother oh sister any thoughts yeah. on this paragraph sister yeah when we speak about and when the paragraph the first paragraph speaks about beliefs of the orthodox belief and the protestants one one thing i see here is asaya speaks about the foretell about the dark behold the dark darkest shall cover the earth and the gross darkest the people yeah that, that this faith is really true that when the darkest cover the earth and and the light the light of christ will come and the soul light to us and the gentile and all the nation and the general will come and see the light that this is true that we all all those unbelievers will come and see the light yeah that's what i'm understanding here but when when we when i look back in the history of, of the orthodox and like the um protestant churches they say that if you do not save or you do not accept jesus christ as your savior you will be going to hell but the scripture here speaks about that when the darkest cover the earth and the light of the god and the light of christ will come and all of us all the nation and all the earth will come together and see the light again Yes, brother. That's what I'm understanding. Very good, sir. Very good. Nice uh, understanding of the paragraph. Good. Uh, that's what uh, you see. The scripture says uh, that uh, the heathens, uh, even the Gentiles, uh, shall come to the light of uh, the truth. Uh, so, in God's kingdom, all these things will be happening. Uh, good. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Any anyway, anything from the Jonah? Or brother Enid, uh, sorry, sister Enid. Uh, John, brother, please. Yes, I yes. uh, just uh, thought about uh, the the prophecy here. I believe what the prophecy is be, be say, speaks about. It speaks about the light because during the ages, people are uh, are in the darkness since the Garden of Eden, and uh, it happened that this was prophesying that uh, there is a light will be coming. And the only light will come in is a promise, promise light. He's the Son of God, and all the nations should be see the light again. 
from seeing uh, see the light again through that uh, uh, the sun. That's the thought I get out from this prophecy. Very good, brother. Very good. So that's what the Bible says. That's what brother uh, he is trying to bring out from this paragraph. Is that the scriptures doesn't uh, agree with the thought of the orthodox uh, that if you believe you should be saved, if you don't believe you should be going to hell. The scriptures never, you see, agrees to those thoughts. Uh, dear brethren, there are a lot of scriptures uh, in the Bible. We were read in the basic class, uh, which clearly tells that the whole mass of people, you see, shall come to the knowledge of truth. Uh, you see, the mainly the verse about uh, ransom. You see, uh, 1 Timothy 2nd chapter, uh, verses 3 to 6. That is very, very clear. So let us read the scripture. Can anybody read 1 uh, Timothy 2nd chapter, 3 to 6? Anybody? First Timothy, second chapter, three to six. Yes, brother. First Timothy two, three to six. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse two. For kings and all who are in other things, that we may lead. A quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. No, first Timothy, also. first Timothy, second chapter. Three to six. Yes, yes. Hmm. First Timothy, yes. Verse 3, let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the volley no, Pastor, away. Sir, you are reading, you're reading Thessalonica. I, yes. Timothy. You got First Timothy? First Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy 2. Verse 3. First 3. First Timothy 2. First 3, chapter 2. First Timothy chapter two. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our yes. Savior. Yes. It starts from there. Mm. For this is Please good read. and acceptable in sight of God our Savior, who desire all men to be saved and to mm. come to the knowledge of the truth. See, this is God's plan. God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Then how can God decide that uh, only few be saved and the whole world, the rest of the world will be tormented in hell? You see, the Bible doesn't say so. The Bible doesn't support the theory. A lot of scriptures are there that God wants everybody to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Read one more scripture in Psalms 22, verse 27. 22nd chapter, verse 27. Can you read? Yes. Psalm 22, 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And mm. all the families of the nations shall worship before you. Mm. You see? The ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. You see? We tell now, turn, turn, repent and turn. The whole world will remember and turn to God. You see, the whole conversion will be in such an extent, you see, it will be a very grand, you see, thing. It will be in such a way that none of the neighbors will require to tell his neighbor, you understand God. Why? Because from the least, even to the greatest, 
everybody would have understood about god in god's kingdom read jeremiah 31st chapter verse 34 jeremiah 31 verse 34 Yes, Jeremiah 31, 34. No more shall every man teach his neighbor, and every man his brother say, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of men, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. You see, from the least even to the greatest of them, everybody shall know God. Is it in hell? <laughs> if everybody goes to hell and how come everybody the least even from the greatest uh, shall know lord this is going to happen on this earth that they have ran so all the scriptures clearly prove that god has made a plan you see and a particular time they will all come to the knowledge of truth you see but now if you see the majority of them has not come so what does it mean you see that clearly means that god has never attempted to convert the world you see now uh, what is the purpose of god uh, in uh, preaching the truth in the gospel age what is god's plan in the gospel age does he want to uh, bring the whole world now tell me what is god's plan in the gospel age it is human plan it's human plan to bring everybody to to see truth now itself but what is god's plan what is god doing in the gospel age read luke 1232 luke chapter 12 verse 32 anybody can read Yes, brother. Luke mm. twelve thirty two. Mm. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You see, fear not, little flock. Did he say fear not the whole world? It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. No, little flock. God is selecting this little flock in the gospel age. So, what about God's uh, plan for the entire world? Uh, you see, dear brethren, uh, you see, God has made a plan in the future, not now. If God had made that plan now, but the whole world should uh, come to Christ now, dear brethren, uh, you see, then surely God's plan is utter failure. You see, if God had ever attempted uh, to convert the whole world. and still even after 2000 years nothing has happened the whole world is not even come to the truth then that shows that god's plan is really failed you see because only 33% has been saved after you see 2000 years but what is god's plan you see then does it mean that god has made a plan and it doesn't have that Uh, god doesn't have that power to bring it into action or bring it to, to be implemented no dear brethren god's words is so powerful at once if it comes it will definitely finish his work uh, and uh, until it finishes his work it never returns to god so read isaiah 55 isaiah 55 verse uh, 10 and 11 Is a fifty fifth chapter, yes. verse ten uh, and eleven. Isaiah fifty five ten and eleven, verse ten. Mm. For us the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, mm. and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth a bond, that it may be give seed to the sower, and bread to the eating. Verse eleven. Mm. So shall my word be the goes forth from my mouth. it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what i please and it shall 
prosper in the things for which I send it. Mm -hmm. See? How powerful is God's words? God compares his words to the rain. As the rain comes, it never returns back without fulfilling its purpose. You see? It gives, uh, you see, seed, you see, to the sower and uh, it brings bread to the eater. That's the purpose of the rain, no? You see, to bring, to bring uh, suitable fruit. So, similarly, if God has sent any word of God, it will never return to God empty hand. If God really sent his word to convert the whole world now itself, and definitely it would have definitely been fulfilled. You see, the creative days, we have seen six days God created, seventh day you rested. You see, did God take anybody's help to fulfill his purpose? No. God commanded, everything happened. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Did he need any support? He commanded, it happened. That is the power of God. Dear brethren, if God had ever attempted to convert the world, you see, in this gospel age, it would have definitely happened. If nothing such thing has happened, dear brethren, it clearly shows that God has never intended that plan. That is not the plan of God. That is what our brother is trying to tell here. You see, huh? uh, dear brethren, it will be a relief to the perplexed child of God to notice that uh, Prophet Isaiah photos the very condition of things today, what we see today. And the remedy for it also, that's the question. How has the word of God, through the Prophet Isaiah, foretold this very condition of affairs and his remedy? You see, you all have read the scripture, Isaiah 60, verse 2 and 3. You see, the darkness covers the earth, gross darkness the people. You see, today, the whole world are uh, under ignorance, uh, under darkness, uh, you see, of uh, false doctrines, uh, you see, false beliefs, uh, you see. That is the reason uh, the God of uh, this world has blinded uh, their eyes. So, nobody has been able to come to the truth. Uh. But uh, what does the, uh, the scripture also say? You see, uh, the scripture says... Uh, but the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to the light, but the Lord shall rise. You see, at Jesus' second coming, you see, Jesus is called the Son of Righteousness. You see, huh? as the sun dispels darkness, Jesus comes as a son of righteousness with healing in his wings uh, and he shall bring light to the whole world. As uh, light comes, darkness goes away. So when Jesus returns, uh, he brings the truth to the whole world. Uh, you see, dear brethren, we know that already the Lord has returned. You see, so shortly when the kingdom will be visibly established on this earth, uh, what will happen? That complete darkness shall go off. Uh, Light shall be given to the whole world. Especially whom? The Bible says, the verse says, the Gentiles shall come to the light. Imagine, all the Gentiles, all the unbelievers will come to the light. The, you see, understanding of the scriptures, dear brethren, these scriptures promises that everybody shall come to the knowledge of truth. This is God's plan. You see, God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. This is what this uh, volume tries to bring out. God has a plan and in that plan, the whole world of mankind are in it and they shall be saved. Dear brethren, uh, we'll stop here for today's volume study. Uh, we thank the Lord for giving this wonderful opportunity to share uh, you see, some of the uh, thoughts on this uh, uh, paragraphs uh, with you uh, early this morning. Uh, we thank the Lord. Anybody, any comments on this paragraph? Any, anybody? Anybody from Solomon Island or anybody? Any thoughts, any comments? Would you like to add some words for it? Yes, sir. Yeah, this passage, 
the human creates present a, uh, it says the human creates present a glo gloomy outlook but scriptures offer a brighter view of salvation god's plan of salvation is not seen as a failure you know god's plan will never fly, fail here isaiah prophecy foretells some two shades of darkness darkness and grass darkness so as a bible student we should know what is the meaning of uh, this verse this is very important there is darkness another one is grass darkness see the darkness uh, shall cover the earth and the grass darkness the people okay but the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee so here the darkness refers to the confused state uh, regarding the plan of god by the christians there is a civilized society you can say around more than 3600 uh, denominations are there right so uh, it's it refers to civilized christian society they made their own creed and uh, uh, they follow that right uh, not the god's plan of salvation so the darkness covers the earth there is earth reference a civilized uh, site then the grass darkness covers the people this grass darkness is uh, is the entire heathen world the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe believe not so this is the uh, grass darkness the entire world is under darkness without knowing anything about jesus right so they do not understand what is the love of god this a heathen people okay that's what uh, in this passage it is mentioned so everything everything will be uh, corrected uh, the gentile nations heathen will come to the god's light as foretold in the kingdom so this conveys hope and redemption as part of uh, uh as part of our uh, christian belief okay yeah that's my uh, my opinion on this passage so jona do you have any questions on this uh yes brother uh my my thought is uh like uh, about the the scripture and isaiah the light has come and i what i i mean here is like uh, the thought which in the history there is a mankind have all have seen and uh, the darkness cover like uh, there is no civilization but until until the promise uh one which is christ alone so the light into the world and it enters all the gentile nation that's the gospel and the and the people begin to see the righteous the righteous life and the, the way to god to 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 sacrifice to god the way to observe uh, righteousness in order to for them to stay in the light and uh, the other thing is uh, like uh, jesus himself says that he did he did not come to condemn this world but through the world might save through him yes brother. yes very really nice thank you thank, thank you. you dear brother thank you all